안녕하십니까? 니콜라스입니다. And today we're going to learn how to use the newly announced ChatGPT API. And we're also going to see what kind of products we can build with it. I'm sure that by now you know about ChatGPT and how mind-blowing it is. But what you may not know is that you can actually build products on top of ChatGPT or integrate ChatGPT in your already existing websites and apps by using the ChatGPT API. You can not only call ChatGPT from within your code, but you can also customize and find tune ChatGPT according to what your business needs are. This means that you can have a chatbot with the power of ChatGPT that also knows how to reply to your users or customers about specific questions about your business. To get inspiration on what we can build with this API, we can look at Instacart, a grocery delivery app. They are using ChatGPT and their own product data to build a better search experience where the users can ask for ideas about what to cook or what is a healthy meal and receive an answer by ChatGPT with ideas that use products they can shop for. Shopify is also using ChatGPT on their own app, Shop, as a shopping assistant. They extended ChatGPT and added the products on their database, which makes it possible for ChatGPT to search the store database and recommend products that the user is looking for and is able to buy. I hope this gives you an idea of the kind of things you can build with this API. So let's talk about it and see how we can use it. OpenAI, the company behind ChatGPT, has had an API for a while. But what they announced some days ago is the release of the model GPT 3.5 Turbo, which is the same model used on the ChatGPT product that we have all seen before. The reason why this model is making news is because of how cheap it is to use it. According to OpenAI, thanks to some optimizations that they made, the new model is 10 times cheaper than the previous one, bringing the price to 0.002 dollars per 1,000 tokens. When you send a question to ChatGPT, that question is chopped into pieces called tokens. Sometimes a word is a token, and sometimes a long word will be split on multiple tokens. A token is just a sequence of characters, and ChatGPT is very good at predicting what the next token on a sequence of tokens will be. Here you can see how the question, what is the distance between the moon and the sun, plus the answer that we receive gives us a total of 54 tokens. With those numbers, we can ask questions like that thousands of times before we pay the first $2. That is super cheap. To get started with the API, jump on platform.openai.com and either log in or create an account and then go to the API keys page and generate your API key. They will only show you the API key once, so make sure to copy paste it somewhere safe. After that, on a computer that has Python installed, open your console and run PIP install OpenAI. All is left is to start talking to ChatGPT using our code. On a new Python file, we will import OpenAI. We will set our API key, which by the way is secret, so make sure to protect it. And after we will create a new chat completion, we will choose the latest GPT 3.5 turbo model and then we will write down a message. As you can see, the message has a role, which we will talk about later, and a content, which is where we will put our question. Finally, we will print the completion to the console to get an output like this. As you can see, we receive a choice inside of a list of choices with the response from ChatGPT. We can also see on the usage key the amount of tokens our question took, the amount the response took, and the total tokens that we spent. As you saw before, when we are sending a message to ChatGPT, we are specifying a role for each message. There are three kinds of roles that we can use, system, user, and assistant. We use the user role when we want to ask something directly to ChatGPT. As if we were a user chatting with it, we use the system role when we want to initialize or configure the model before it receives a message from the user. For example, in this code, you can see how we are sending two messages messages, one with system role and one with user role. We use the system role to initialize the assistant telling it that it is a helpful kindergarten teacher talking to children. So when we ask it to explain what AI is, we get a response like this one that starts by saying, hello kids, today we're going to learn, blah, 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 uses easy language and examples tailored for kids and finishes with, isn't that amazing? If we instead change the code to look like this and we set up our model as if it was a PhD teacher talking to students, the response will be more complex. Using more complex words and telling us that PhD students
students should have a basic understanding of AI. The other role we can use is the assistant role. That one we can use to indicate that the message was a message previously sent by ChatGPT. It is useful for when we are saving the conversation between the user and the assistant, and we want to provide the previous messages to the assistant, which might influence their response. So with this code, we are telling ChatGPT that the user previously asked who owns Tesla, and that ChatGPT previously answered that Elon Musk owns it. And then we ask, how much did he pay for it? If we only asked how much did he pay for it, the AI won't know what we are talking about. But using the assistant role, we can provide messages of a previous conversation, getting an answer that talks about Elon and Tesla. Roles are pretty cool and all, but the thing that I like the most, and what I think many businesses are going to be using is the fine-tuning API, which as of today is not supported on the new GPT 3.5 models, but it is supported with the other GPT-3 models like DaVinci, Curry, and Babbage. Using fine-tuning, you can sort of train the model with your own custom data. So for example, if you wanted to train a model to detect if a customer is happy or not, you will first get the data from your database and write down what the ideal completion will be. Like here, for example, we are explicitly telling the model what a positive and negative review is. When the model sees a similar review, it can detect if it's positive or negative. Of course, we need hundreds of examples to achieve better quality. But being able to fine tune the model is great. You don't have to build a language model yourself. You can inherit all the power of the GPT-3 and add the extra things that are specific to your company or business needs. Fine tuning a model is a little bit more complex and takes more steps. So let me know in the comments if you would like me to make a full tutorial on how to use the OpenAI API and other models as well. As you can see, it is pretty easy to talk to chat GPT from your code and the things you can build with it are super cool. All you have to know is know a little bit of Python and you are good to go. If you want to learn Python for absolutely free with me, then click the link below. There you will find a free six hour course where you will learn Python from zero. The course is for absolute beginners and you can join right now for free by clicking the link below. Join now for free and I will see you there. Onodo, kamsahago, sanahago, daome bayo, See you on the next one. Bye-bye.